to give you a little brief, uh, brief uh, concept about the statue, it was its original location is uh, only about a half a mile immediately to the east of the hill, which was the highest point on what's called the Harbor Hill Moraine. Two splendid statues, which uh, are described as the Marley Horse, had their genesis when Clarence Mackey saw the originals on the Champs-Élysées in Paris in 1910. And he knew that these would be an ideal element to adorn the formal gardens of his house. And he commissioned the sculptor, Francois Plumier, to recreate them, and they were completed in 1921 and installed in the landscape scheme of the house. And they stayed in situ, one of them until about 1950, and the other one until 2009. And in situ meant in the midst of the community of East Hills, with roads and houses and the like. Apparently during the initial construction, the developers saw fit to knock one of these horses down. Well, having had the experience of being involved with the next one, I understand why they didn't do the second. And I was told upon my second or third day, I was informed it was my duty to save this horse, which now was especially vulnerable in light of uh, changes in ownership which were anticipated in East Hills. And Ian uh, persuaded Bruce and Melissa Shulman, the owners of the horse, to donate the horse to the town of North Hempstead with the plan that the Landmark Society would be involved in the restoration and reinstallation of the horse, which would be destined for Gary Park here in North Hempstead. And hearkening forward to what was thought of as the Age of Enlightenment. Remember that Louis XIV was the Sun King. The succeeding French kings regarded themselves as cultural leaders. And the theme of the horse tamer means barbarism being submitted to civilization. And the tamer represents the higher impulses, the horse, the lower impulses. As attractive as a horse may be, horses do need to be guided and tamed to be purposeful in their interaction with humanity. Hence the theme. And it's allegorical. It's a theme that goes back to Castor and Pollux, the first horse tamers before the time of ancient Greece. The Romans used it. There were versions of this on the Capitoline Hill in Rome. And here it now is manifest in Roslyn. Uh, the Roslyn Landmark Society. What is it? What do we do? And who are we? In our mission statement, to paraphrase, what we do is we provide education to the community for historic preservation. We provide, secondly, we provide restoration and preservation of historically significant buildings and sites within the, within the village. What do we do here for, to provide education to the community? Number one, we provide monthly house, monthly, uh, le monthly lecture series that's, that's held every month at the uh, at the uh, atria in Roslyn. This is a uh, this, the senior housing that's that's over on the other side of the viaduct, and designed by a world-renowned architect, Robert A. M. Stern. Just yesterday, Franklin conducted a tour to the Louis Armstrong Museum in Queens. We have periodic guide uh, walking tours and guides throughout the village of Roslyn. And in our, our, we have semi-annual and annual bus tours to surrounding areas, uh, as well as our, our, what we're planning to reinvigorate into the community is the house tour. Not to mention the Van Nostrand Starkins Museum, which everyone knows. Houses that have been restored in Roslyn through the Roslyn Landmark Society efforts over the years, and there's over there's 40. We have restrictive covenants on those buildings. 
what that means is that anybody who owns one of those buildings, if they want to make any modifications, they have to come before the before this organization for changes. And not only that, we have to continuously monitor these buildings. New projects. In conjunction with, with the statue here, one of our newest projects that we're involved with, same site, the, the Mac A, the former Mac A estate, we're now involved with the town of North Hempstead, just to the other side of the railroad trestle. If, if anyone doesn't know, those are the, the original gatehouses to the Mackay estate. The grist mill. Unfortunately, the, with the financial, the, the economic downturn, we have some financial issues with getting that project up and, and, and going. But that project is, is slated to go. We have hired uh, a nationally renowned architect to prepare drawings for this for this building. This is the same architect that's doing work on the on the White House. This current group of volunteers, trustees that we have in this organization, is is a youthful, energetic, and focused group of group of people. By the unveiling of, of today's statue, it just gives credence. This monument represents a grand achievement for the village of Roslyn the Roslyn Landmark Society and the Roslyn community. Roslyn is not just recognized locally here on Long Island or within the tri-state area. The Roslyn Historic District and community is a nationally recognized historic site. I was a Roslyn resident for my first two years of life, living in the gatehouse and coming here to feed the ducks. At age two, I distinctly remembered ducks and the sound of the old water wheel churning like a giant clock. Ever since those impressionable years, I've seen Roslyn as a gem. It's clear skies and green parks, surpassing any sapphire or emerald in old Mrs. Mackey's vault. Our family is privileged to be a part of this village's 370 year history. As family historian, I have my own theories about Clarence Mackey and the Marley horses. By my reckoning, the statues were a part of Clarence's youth, greeting the young boy at the entrance to the Champs Elysees during many family outings between 1877 and 1885. Early photographs of the horses in Paris matched identically the placement of the horses on the Great Lawn at Harbor Hill. I believe Clarence commissioned the replicas to remind him of those carefree days when the future led up the boulevard to his own personal Arc de Triomphe. I want to thank the uh, everyone for being here today, congratulate the society and the town and you residents for doing this project. It's uh, really a remarkable thing, and uh, uh, I'm waiting for it to be unveiled. I know uh, I've been driving by every once in a while, uh, seeing it go up, and uh, I I'm anxious to see it. Uh, bef before I, uh, uh, I, I leave, I just want to mention that uh, it it's going to mean a couple of things to me that maybe not to everybody. When I started at the uh, Nassau County Surrogates Court, the chief clerk was Pat Castelluccio. And his family uh, lives, a, and he still lives there, across from the gatehouse. And when uh, this statute is really, I guess, a relic of, a, of an opulent era, the Gadsby time, were very rich people. But those rich people hired and had working at that magnificent estate a lot of people. And people like the Castelluccios, they worked up there, and they're still here now. And so I'm, when I ride by, I'm going to think of those people also. So congratulations to everyone, to the society, and especially to you folks. Thank you very much. I want to show you. This was the very first presentation that we made to the town of North Hempstead. And I, want, I see my archivist, Jack Binder, who is the first person who introduced me to Howard Kroplick, who if I'm the godmother, he's then the godfather of this statue. Howard knows every stone, every piece of mortar of this statue intimately. 
Um, he brought the project to me from the Landmark Society. And because I love art, because I love history, and because I'm tasked as town clerk of the town of North Hempstead to try and preserve history for future generations, it was really my pleasure, my pleasure, and it was a mission to make sure that we save this statue. Thank you for coming to be part of this. As you can see, it gets a day like this really involves a lot of people. As a resident, a homeowner, and a neighbor for so many of you, uh, right here in the village of Roslyn, I am so pleased that this statue is put right here in the middle of Gary Park. Uh, I want to I also just mention that our mayor from the village of Roslyn, uh, John Durkin, is here. Yeah. And I welcome him. You know, there's always things that come up. There's always last minute uh, searches for money, for, for opportunity. And I was so pleased to have been a, a small part of that uh, to make sure that this was going to get done in a, in a manner that is befitting this historic village. When I thought about the opportunity to be, be a part of this, I actually was thinking about people like Gwendolyn, and Gwendolyn looks actually suspiciously close to the age of my own daughter. My own daughter, whose first experiences in this park was sledding down this hill every winter. I know that our landmark society and our historic district is working daily and tirelessly to preserve what is the, the history of the world. And I am so appreciative that they are doing that effort. You know, Roger and Peggy Gary, they founded the Roslyn Landmark Society. They created the Gary Charitable Trust, who really donated a lot of the funds here to make this possible today. And for whom this park was created, named, they would be so proud today, seeing the whole community out here. You know, this uh, Mackie Horse statue, it's dedicated to the Garys. It's dedicated to the Mackie family, who is so well represented. And it's also dedicated to the wonderful communities within the town of North Hempstead. I have the honor today of coordinating the countdown to unveil the statue. Oh, good. Okay. We're going to do a 10 countdown, and I want everybody to help in the countdown. There's Gwendolyn over here. We got everybody. Okay, are we ready in the back? Yay! Yeah. Everybody ready for the countdown? Let's go. Hey, everybody. Nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 